Welcome back to Woods Creek Workshop. My name is Yuchul. Today we're gonna make a slitting saw arbor. So I went to Fusion 360 and quickly drew up what the arbor will look like. The top shank is a straight shank, three quarter inch. The main body here is one and a half inch. And the bottom piece has a one inch diameter right around here and that's where the saw blade will register because the saw blades have a one inch hole. And the bottom piece goes into the recessed opening right here which is also one inch in diameter. and 3 8 inch by 24 fine thread bolt will go through this hole and the hole right there is threaded so should be pretty simple we'll go to the shop and get started we're gonna start by machining the end piece uh, the reason for that is because the end piece is where the saw blade will register. That diameter needs to be a um, few thousands, well maybe a half thou to one and a half thou smaller than one inch to fit this. So that's a very important diameter to make it run uh, true. So that's what we're going to start with. I should mention this is 4140. It's uh, about one and three quarter of an inch, and uh, the outside diameter, you know, needs to be one and a half. And obviously, the the smaller diameter where the blade registers needs to be just shy of one inch. So uh, we're gonna take it down to uh, one and a half first. One point six ten. So we got 110 thou to take off. We'll reset the dial. Anyway, while I was talking and turning, uh, I almost had a chip, hot chip fly into my mouth. So I better be careful. I guess just safety glasses aren't enough anymore. Let's see how we did. I think I overshot. There you go. Too big. I don't know if I did my math wrong, but it came out to 993,610. Some reason came out 5,000 small. Hey, what are you gonna do, right? Well, to forge ahead. And no, I won't edit that out. It dawned on me. I can use that because the shank's going to be only three quarter of an inch. So we're just going to flip it. All right, let's see where we are. 200 to go. Okay, so we'll set the dial. Stop short of that. All right, cooled off. One point zero three nine five. So just shy of forty thousand. About well, yeah, about forty thousand to come off. We'll take thirty five off and sneak up to it. About six thousand to go. Hmm. 
Hmm. Turn that small. I better check my mic. Check, check, check two. Sibilance, check. I think they may be off. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we need to talk about what just happened. After all, two out of every ten psychologists says couples should talk about the problems. You just saw me scrap two pieces because the dimensions didn't come out right. What you don't know is there's a third piece that I didn't I'm not including in the video. So why does it all of a sudden that I start making scrap parts? Sure. We all make wrong dimensions time to time, but three pieces in a row? Well, I figured it out. This beautiful box contains what's supposed to be one of the most precise measuring tools in your shop. In fact, it contains three. These are brown and sharp micrometers, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3 inches. I bought this a second hand few years ago, but it's more like fourth or fifth hand. It's been used a lot before I got it. It was used in a working machine shop by a machinist to earn his living, and these did not get babied. Of course none of this was disclosed by the seller. He claimed that these were well taken care of, very good condition, blah 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 blah. Lie after lie after lie. As soon as I received I noticed that they were not in the best of condition. So I completely tore them down, uh, cleaned, relooped, and reassembled. And also, some of these carbide tips were chipped when I got it. Of course, I reached out to the seller promptly, but, you know, another lie after lie after lie. He claimed that he'll make it right. He'll send me a bunch of other stuff. Well, never heard from him again. But I limped along. I would clean them, recondition them as best as I can and trusted that they would be honest with me. And over time there were signs that they may be lying to me from time to time. Small lies, you know, small white lies. Kind of like one of the ex-girlfriends I had in college. Just things didn't add up, but you know, I dismissed them as me being confused or uh, forgetting things. Until that fateful day you find out that she's been cheating on you with another guy or guys at the same time. Well, yesterday was that day for me with these. They've been lying to me over time, but yesterday they told the biggest lies. And you saw me, I trusted them, and where did they take me? Down a dark alley. I gotta tell you, it hurt. Nobody likes being lied to. And the woman that you're dating, find out she's dating three other guys. Oh, hey, by the way, she's pregnant by one of the other guys. I guess that's the silver lining of the whole matter. But I knew their days were numbered. They're very loose. The knobs, friction, couldn't be adjusted. It's really difficult to get a good feel as to when you have a perfect diameter and... Uh, it was just time to go our separate ways, and it has been for a long time. I just didn't want to accept it. And the girl in college? Well, we dated two or three more weeks after that. I mean, she was hot. So I was standing there in front of the lathe, fuming, being reminded me of that fateful day in college. It was all crawling back in my head. The rage was filling inside, brewing like bad coffee. And then my wife walks in and she says, what's going on? So I explained to her, hey, I just got lied and cheated on again. 
and let me high and dry. That's when she said, Honey, just buy new ones. And I said, Honey, they're very expensive. And she says, So what? And I said, What do you mean, so what? And she says, Just buy new ones. And I said, But honey, she's beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful. And she says, How many bad parts are you going to make? And with those words, I knew what I had to do. It was time to say goodbye. I think I shed a few tears. I was sad. But, you know, we all must pick up and move on, right? So meet my new Mitutoyo. I talk about beauty. I present to you Mitutoyo Quantum Mic. Why Quantum Mic? Because they haven't come out with Quant 3 Mic. Duh. This one happens to be 1 to 2 inches. I have 0 to 1 inch coming. Supposedly, it's on the back of an Amazon delivery truck right now, probably lost or hanging out at McDonald's taking their sweet old time while I'm sitting here going, where's my mic? Check one, sibilance. Anyway, no more counting and adding 25, 50, 75 and flipping over to look at the split lines. This baby is beautiful, but I'm not going to throw these out. I'm going to keep them. I'm going to put them on the shelf. I'm going to look at them as a reminder to be never stepped on, lied to, and cheated on again. Perfect fit. What a pain in the butt. Alright, so we're going to go in and relieve that corner there. This major diameter right here of this portion is about five thousandths over what it needs to be and I'm gonna finish that once my I have this mount on the rest of the arbor together so they're the same diameter and we need to part this off at about two hundred thousandths from here that gives us a little meat to finish the end later Next we're going to clean up the surface here and we're going to drill out the hole for the bolt and recess for the head of the bolt. Doesn't have to be exact but we're shooting for about 188, 190. A little bit of the oil. Now clearance hole for 3 8 inch bolt is supposed to be, let's come my hair. I use this a lot. I love this book, black book. 3 8 inch is supposed to be 13 32nd, which is 0 0.4062. But I want it a little bit tighter than that. So I'm going to go with uh, letter W, which is... Uh, 0.386 I think Let's lightly chamfer that hole Okay, we're gonna machine a little bit of a relief angle. This is this will be the bottom, so about five degrees. Set the compound at about five degrees. It's not critical, but uh, 
we're going to use this. On my compound handle at the end, I have a round plate that I bolted on right here and has a quarter inch square hole where this quarter inch drive swivel fits in and just use a drill to, to advance the compound in and out. Being a swivel gives me a lot of flexibility on where I stand. By the way, I should put it in reverse because I'm machining off the back. Now we're going to work on the main arbor now. I'm going to start with the three quarter inch shank first because then I can register off of that the rest of the body. So just easier to keep it all aligned. Now I have a couple different live centers. This one is Skoda. It's really high quality. But I also have Shars. Difference between this one is what they call CNC, but really it's just the long nose. See the difference? So um, sometimes it just helps it easier, makes it easier to sneak up on towards the end if the diameter is small. So we'll use that. It's proven to be pretty, pretty good quality for me. I'm gonna have to make a little chip shield or something because I'm having to use a piece of paper to protect my face. The par has cooled. I took a measurement. We're about just over 900,000, so we got 150 thousands to uh, whittle away. So let's get to it. Half thou under. I'm okay with that. Alright, let's get the side going. I guess I might as well just start with the tapping hole. The letter Q. 0 0.3320. Okay, we're gonna go three quarter of an inch, open it up to half an inch, and then we'll bore it out. All right, I got the boring bar set up. We're gonna bore it out to uh, one inch, but really, just we need to make sure it's a tight fit to the end piece that we made. Now, you see my blue. Uh, PDI precision depth indicator again, but that's just a idiot line for me. I have the dial set to so that it'll uh, set to zero. I swapped out the boring bar to a bigger one. Out the boring bar again, bigger. Nine ninety 
55. So I think we just uh, spring past. for the hole first. Three eight twenty four fine thread. bottoming tab to finish. This is uh, by YG1, another Amazon find. These are really good. I got a uh, few YG1 taps and they're just awesome. They're Korean made. And I'm not saying that just because I'm Korean. That would be racist. Well, actually I forgot to put some oil on it. Always use oil. Although they, it has a special coating, it makes it pretty slick. Cool. Now they, uh, YG1, they make, uh, they sell uh, F4 series and F8 series. This is F8, it costs a little more, but uh, has a special coating that just makes tapping uh, effortless. Uh, this is 3824 fine pitch thread. I think I paid like 15 bucks on Amazon and it's a high speed seal. Very good. I was able to buy a 38 fine thread hex cap bolt. With that piece cooled off now it just it's a perfect fit. Very nice. So we want to finalize the outside diameter of the main body with the end cap all together. The end cap is pretty darn close. I think it was only like five thousandths off, so it doesn't need much. Couple thou under, I'm okay with that. We're going to put a decorative 45 degree taper at the top right there. We just got to make sure we don't run into it with the tool post. I gave it a quick polish with emery cloth as some WD-40. Looks good, I think. That is a perfect fit. Well, it would help if I put the blade on right backwards. I think it turned out pretty good. Well, the saw arbor came out beautiful. Just Unfortunately, it took us a little bit of a detour to get there. 
You know, shortly after I broke up with that girlfriend in college, I ended up at a party and uh, ran into my old uh, high school friend. He and I were just chit-chatting and uh, he was pretty bummed. I was pretty bummed and found out that uh, he had just broken up with his girlfriend too. And I said, hey, me too. And he says, well, you know, he found out she was cheating on him. And I said, hey, me too. <laughs> and he says, yeah, it's pretty bad. And I said, yeah, it's pretty bad. And he said, uh, he also found out that she was pregnant by some other guy. And I said, hey, me too. <laughs> and, uh, just a little more talking, and we found out that he and I were dating the same girl at the same time. And uh, once he found that out, he got pretty mad at me, and he thought, hey, you know, what were you doing with my girlfriend? And I said, well, what were you doing with my girlfriend? Anyway, 100% true story. Can't make this stuff up. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.